uh, for brain health is, I, th I said, start your coffee with coffee. And now I'm going to tell you to end your day with a cup of tea. We're talking about daytime habits, actually for brain health. Start with coffee, end with tea. Now, this is what I actually do almost every single night. Now, why do I end with tea? Well, tea is good. Green tea, we know, has catechins, EGCG, Epic, Gallo, Catechin 3, Gallate. All right, it's a mouthful. Uh, you don't have to try to memorize it. Just know that researchers like me, actually, we know what it is. All right, so at polyphenols, uh, green tea. Green tea also has caffeine, right? And it also has something called L-theanine. Guess what? All of these uh, bioactives, EGCG, caffeine, L-theanine, they are all anti-inflammatory. End of the day, what better thing can you do than to cool off any inflammation, right? So that's what green tea does. Um, by the way, L-theanine has been studied. It actually improves calmness as well. So clinical trials have been done in humans uh, uh, being administered L-theanine and it, it actually induces a sense of calmness and a sense of relaxation, calms your mind. So that's one of the reasons why I drink tea at the end of the day, after dinner, you know, I might sip some tea, I never put dairy in my tea or coffee, by the way, because um, dairy, cow uh, uh, fat, actually forms little tiny soap bubbles around the polyphenols. And when I drink the coffee or the tea, I'll still get some of the bioactives, but a lot of it gets wrapped up in those little soap bubbles from dairy, uh, milk, dairy fat, and it tumbles down through my gut and I don't absorb as much as I could. Now, nut milks are okay. So if you really want to cut your tea or coffee, you know, an almond milk or soy milk or cashew milk, all that is actually fine. They won't form those same type of soap bubbles. All right, back to tea. Um, if I want to get as much EGCG as I can, I'm drinking my tea straight. I'm sipping it at the end of the day. It's calming. Uh, and uh, the other thing it does is it actually improves a process called neurogenesis. So this has been studied in the lab. The, the bioactives like EGCG from tea can actually help your neurons stay healthy and they can even cause them to grow. This has been studied in uh, sort of developing uh, animals, young animals and looking at brain development. Guess what? It helps your nerves actually grow. Now some teas like matcha, which is packed with EGCG, right? So look, regular tea leaves that you're actually soaking and steeping in a tea ball, for example, is uh, dissolving out the, the polyphenols in hot water. You're steeping the tea. All right, um, and a lot of the polyphenols will come out, but not all of it, because it's a whole leaf. Well, matcha actually is the entire leaf ground up into a fine powder. Now you've got this fine powder. All of it is actually in a water. You stir up a cup of matcha, it's powdery green, bright green. You're gonna get all the tea leaves, all the dietary fiber, good for your microbiome, but all the polyphenols, all the EGCG, all the L-theanine, uh, all the caffeine as well. So. Matcha tea has been studied clinically and shown that not only is it in high levels of EGCG, it has high levels of EGCG bioactives, it's also been shown to enhance cognitive function, right? So here's an advantage of grounding up the whole leaf as opposed to just steeping the tea leaves or putting it in a tea bag where you're not gonna get all those polyphenols out that you could, all right? Clinical studies have also shown that green tea can reduce anxiety, again, that calming effect of L-theanine um, and calming anxiety is actually really important for self-care, really important for mental health and mental wellness. And look, who doesn't live with some amount of stress? In fact, arguably some stress is good for your health. You don't wanna be completely chill the whole time. A little tension is good in your life, but unfortunately in our usual lives, we uh, live with probably too much stress. So. It's a welcome opportunity to have a cup of tea at night to actually lower your stress. Now, the um, other thing is that L-theanine has been studied and it improves clinically. It improves the ability for executive function decision making, right? Now, you don't need, you might not need this at night, but you, but you certainly want it the next morning when you wake up. So L-theanine actually helps your brain. We're talking about brain health now. Be able to make clearer, calmer, better, executive decisions. You don't want to be the CEO. You're the CEO of a company. You can be the CEO of your own life and you want to be able to be that executive and make good executive decisions for yourself. It doesn't matter even if, if it affects anyone else. 
even if it's just for you, you want to make have clarity on that. And L-theanine in green tea is actually good. Now, green tea also improves memory and the ability to stay focused uh, so you have less distractions. Again, this is not something you need at night. Uh, you want calmness at night, but actually having all this stuff in your uh, bloodstream allows you to function better the next day. You wake up and your brain is refreshed. It had a calm night of sleep, and now you've got this ability to, to focus and make better decisions. That's actually a really, really good thing. And how do we know that green tea can affect brain uh, activity, the kind of brain activity we're talking about? Because there is actually a scan called fMRI, functional MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, that actually has been shown when people have drink tea, you study brain activity, you can see it light up. It actually does uh, your brain a world of good by lighting it up. The ECGC we talked about reduces the risk of cognitive decline. It protects you against neurodegenerative diseases. There's multiple mechanisms of action. We don't understand everything about how this works. Look, I'm a scientist and an honest scientist will tell you when they don't know. So I'm telling you, we don't have all the answers to how green tea and the EGCG protects against neurodegeneration. But clearly, one of the reasons, one of the explanations that it lowers inflammation. That's one of the common denominators of all brain diseases and inflammation. So green tea, EGCG, lowers that inflammation. All right. Now, the other thing that EGCG and the other polyphenols in green tea does is it improves your endothelial health. Remember, the endothelium is that ice skating, slippery layer of cells lining blood vessels. You want it to be really smooth. Blood just kind of goes, like it just cruises right through your brain, delivers the oxygen, delivers the nutrients. Green tea helps vascular health, reduces the risk of vascular dementia, helps that blood get to where it needs to in your brain so you actually have better function. All right, so drink coffee uh, in the morning, drink tea at night. Quality is on Dr. Lee's mind as far as the next tip is concerned. Now, the third thing, a habit I'm, I'm telling you that's good for your brain health is to pay attention to how you can improve your metabolism throughout the day. Now, metabolism is basically how your body uses energy, which you have to get that fuel for your energy by eating food, right? So you eat food, it gets turned into fuel, the fuel gets stored in your body, and then your body can actually run its activities, you know, it runs basic functions, but you can also run to the airport or do whatever else you need to do um, uh, because you have the fuel like gas in a gas tank. That's how your metabolism actually works. And how many calories you eat is exactly equivalent in terms of concept into how many gallons of fuel you actually put in your fuel tank. Now, obviously, if you want to put fuel in your fuel tank, you want to put good quality fuel. Nobody wants to put crappy fuel in your fuel tank. And this is the same with the quality of food that you load energy into your body. You want good quality fuel, means you have to eat good quality food. So when we talk about having um, uh, good whole foods, mostly plant-based, eaten in, in healthy oils, nuts and legumes and, and, and seeds, et cetera, et cetera. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about good quality fuel. Now, just like a car, Every now and then, if you put some crummy gas because you run out of dollars, you're searching for the small change that you could put a couple of gallons in your tank. Look, do that once in a while. Your car is not going to crap out because of that. But if you put crappy quality fuel, fuel in your body day in and day out, week after week, month after month, year in and year out, you know what's going to happen to your car when you put poor quality fuel all the time into your car? It's not going to last as long. The engine is not going to function as well. The fuel lines are going to get clogged. Same deal in your body. So to take care of your metabolism, and by the way, I'm talking about brain metabolism being super intense uh, compared to your regular body metabolism. You want to actually put good quality fuel in your tank. And you don't want to actually put too much uh, in your tank as well. If you overflow your gas tank, what happens in, like, at the gas station? If you overflow your gas tank, that's like eating too much, overeating too many calories in your body. Well, at the filling station, if you put too much gas in your gas tank, the gas flows up. If you didn't have a clicker that would stop the, the, the gas nozzle, what would happen? The gas would overflow out of your tank, run down the side of the car, around the tires, pool around your shoes, and now you're standing in a dangerous, harmful, flammable mess, right? That's what happens when you overflow, overfill your gas tank. Now, imagine if you did that uh, with food. 
And this is what happens. We overeat. Overconsumption is one of the underlying problems in Western society, including America. We overeat. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a product of having a prosperous society. We've got food everywhere. There's no limitations. We eat as much as we want. Well, sometimes we want too much or we overeat or we're addicted to eating or we're uh, conditioned uh, or even fooled into eating food uh, that tastes really great, ultra processed foods. When we overeat, we are overloading our fuel tanks and that is bad because it overloads our metabolism. We're storing too much fuel. Now in our body, we don't, have, we can't just uh, spill out the fuel like in a, like a metal gas tank in a car. What happens is that our extra fuel gets stored into our fat cells, also called adipose cells. You fill up one adipose cell with too much food. That's okay, you got another adipose cell. Oh, you're still eating? Let's fill that one up too. Oh, still eating? You fill up another one until you're running out of fat cells. Now your body, if you still keep on overeating, will call in stem cells, fat stem cells, to make more fat. Now you can make more, fill up another fat cell and another one and another one. And you see, this is why when you overeat, you're actually gonna build up fat, all right? This is actually how it works. Our metabolism, and then our body's gotta burn it down. But our body isn't gonna be able to burn things down naturally if we overload it over a long period of time. And this is why we have to control the amount of food that we eat. Okay, so um, uh, you gotta watch your metabolism, not overfill your tank. This food is amazing. Doctor will now tell how we can eat to activate our metabolism. Now, habit number four is you wanna eat foods that activate your metabolism to burn down fat. Now, I write about this in my book, Eat to Beat Your Diet, and if you guys haven't seen it, this is what it looks like. All right, eat to beat your diet. Um, it's got a lot of pages, but the key is that there's a lot of tables and charts of foods that can activate your metabolism. So yes, you can eat to burn down harmful body fat and elevate your metabolism, all right? So I'm gonna tell you that some of the foods that you should be eating to activate your metabolism are beans, legumes. Uh, white beans, kidney beans, red beans, pinto beans, uh, you name it, uh, gigantic fava beans, all great, okay? Uh, soybeans, chickpeas, uh, lentils, these actually, um, uh, uh, these foods, these beans and legumes can actually activate your metabolism. Another category of food that can activate your metabolism are brassica vegetables. Brassica vegetables are the ones that have a slightly uh, sulfurous taste, you know, broccoli, kale, bok choy, uh, cabbage, uh, cauliflower, all those types of um, uh, Swiss chard, those types of brassica uh, really do a great job uh, of activating our metabolism. They activate our brown fat, which burns down harmful white fat, so you're, bur you're, you're, you're charging, supercharging your metabolism. I have a video on, uh, uh, many videos actually, talking about brown fat and white fat. In a nutshell, brown fat is good fat, white fat can be bad fat if we overeat, it, it grows up too much. And when we eat foods like brassica that contain a bioactive called sulforaphanes, they activate the brown fat. It's just like in a, uh, a kitchen where you've got a gas range, you go click, 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 whoosh. Now you can cook your soup or boil your water. All right, well, in your brown fat, when that happens, click, 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 whoosh, you're eating the broccoli. Sulforaphanes are activating the brown fat. That brown fat, like your uh, range, is on fire, it's generating heat, it's called thermogenesis. Now, on your stove, in order for your uh, gas range to generate heat, click, 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 whoosh, it's gotta draw gas from someplace, it gets it from the gas line. Maybe you got a tank in the side of your house, or maybe you've got gas coming from your street lines. Well, in your body, when your brown fat goes click, 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 whoosh, because you've eaten brassica vegetables with the sulforaphanes, it's, it's heating up thermogenesis, Where's the fat, brown fat, drawing that energy from, the fuel from? Well, it's drawing it from your white fat, specifically your visceral fat. So brown fat can burn down white fat. Brown fat's good fat, burns down excess bad fat, white fat, and brassica can actually activate that. And so can onions. Onions are allium. Allium actually belongs to a whole category. It's a big umbrella. Onions, uh, scallions, shallots, garlic, they all fall in this category. They actually contain quercetin. Quercetin is another bioactive that, you got it, activates your brown fat, click, 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 whoosh, draws down that um, uh, energy uh, and the fuel from harmful excess white fat. 
T can also do the same thing, the catechins in T. So we're talking about EGCG and uh, turns on your brown fat, the burn on your white fat. Uh, and uh, it's not just green tea, not just matcha, but it turns out that oolong tea, which is the kind of tea you get in a Chinese restaurant oftentimes, jasmine tea can do the same thing. Even black teas like uh, pu'er tea, which is a fermented tea or Earl Grey tea, black English breakfast tea, they will all do the same thing. So they can actually turn on your brown fat to burn down your white fat. And guess what? So can coffee with chlorogenic acid. Again, back to the coffee, back to the thing you start the day with and the tea end the day with. Now I'm telling you in the middle, when you're eating, choose some of these foods, the beans, the brassica, the onions, the carrots, the tea, the coffee, and you're actually gonna be practicing uh, habits that are better for uh, brain health as well. And plenty of green vegetables. Now the doctor will tell us a little bit about gut health. Okay, now I can't let you forget that your gut health is connected to your brain health. So if your gut isn't healthy, your brain's probably not healthy as well. Uh, and gut inflammation is such a huge deal. And this is one of the reasons why you wanna cut down on uh, ultra processed foods because many ultra processed foods actually damage your gut bacteria, which then makes unhealthy gut, which then makes it difficult to have a healthy brain. Now, what about a snack? Uh, we talked about other foods. You want a brain healthy snack? Try eating tree nuts. Tree nuts, uh, of course, if you're not allergic, but most people are not. Tree nuts, you know, pecans, almonds, walnuts, uh, cashews, macadamias, even pine nuts, all right? Nuts are a healthy source of, of healthy fats, good source of healthy fats, and a source of dietary fiber. Good for gut health, good for brain health, all right? And uh, nuts definitely improve the microbiome. And this, in a good healthy microbiome, guess what? Lowers inflammation. Lowers inflammation, also good for the brain. And good healthy gut bacteria help your brain secrete those neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, all helpful, helpful for you to have a better mood. Good brain health, good emotional health, good mental health, mental, mental wellness as well. So I uh, gave you some foods that are actually good. I'll give you one last tip about foods that are actually healthy are uh, eat colorful foods. Uh, colorful foods are uh, plant-based foods. You know, you go to the produce section, you look at your red bell peppers, the green peppers, you look at the orange and yellow peppers. Uh, there's a whole variety of green, that counts too. This green isn't just one color, it's a whole bunch of different colors you can see in the produce section. Mix it up, and the fruits, of course. Uh, seasonal fruits have all kinds of different colors. Just look at ber the berry section, amazing. Those colorful bioactives, in other words, the natural chemicals that give the foods their colors, actually activate your metabolism, burn down harmful body fat, and the polyphenols are good for brain health as well. We love nuts. Any other tips about drinking? Okay, now, if you want a basic, basic, basic beverage for brain health, I know we talked about tea, I know we talked about coffee, but here is the most important tip I can give you. Don't forget to drink water. Water is the most popular beverage in the world, and it's necessary to prevent dehydration of your brain. Really, really important. When your brain is really dehydrated, okay, it's in big trouble. So you wanna actually drink uh, water, enough water every day to kind of keep your brain watered. So think about a plant that you might have in your kitchen windowsill. You're gonna put, give it a little water. You don't want to be too waterlogged, and that, that kill the roots. Um, but you wanna have just enough to be able to actually keep it alive and thriving in the sunshine. And the same thing of drinking water. Now water's in a lot of things, water's in coffee, water's in tea. But I'm bringing this point up because you can just drink regular old plain water. Drink it out of a tap, drink it out of a glass. That's actually what you prefer. It's good for your brain. That's good for brain health, okay? And I'm telling you this because if you are thirsty, you might have the temptation to reach for a soft drink, a soda, or a fruit juice. And in every single case, a glass of water is gonna be better than a soda. Regular soda, sugar-sweetened beverage, or a uh, uh, diet soda, uh, the water, cup of water is gonna be better for you. And fruit juice, look, um, who doesn't like a fruit juice every now and then? There's a lot of sugar in fruit juice, all right? And so it's always better to drink water. Every now and then, if you're gonna have fruit juice, I actually tell you just to have the whole fruit. 
and then you get the dietary fiber and all the polyphenols as well. All right. Drink of water. Dr. Lee will recap his tips and provide us with his last tip. So we talked about have coffee in the morning, uh, tea in the evening. We said, watch your metabolism, try to elevate your metabolism. We gave some specific foods that you can actually eat to, um, uh, uh, and beverages that you can add to eat to uh, enhance your metabolism uh, and good for brain health. Fifth, exercise. Exercise, movement, okay, is good for the brain. You know, when they actually found what kind of movement, one of the best kind of movements you can do until you're really quite old is dancing, all right? Dancing happens to be something. If you've ever seen, go to, if you look up on, on YouTube, dancing in China, you will see people who are elderly doing ballroom dancing in public squares in the evening. It's actually really delightful to actually see, all right? So, but any kind of physical activity, walking, running, you don't need to actually belong to a gym. You don't need to actually hire a, a trainer. You could, all right? And you don't even need to own a bike or uh, play basketball with your buddies, but you wanna stay in motion. Do you like to do all those sporting activities? Please do it, play pickleball, whatever it is that actually keeps you in motion. Walking upstairs keeps you in motion. Walking around your house when it's raining, cats and dogs outside and you don't wanna get soaked, walk around the house. That is staying in motion. Uh, keeping in motion makes for good circulation, better blood vessel health, with better brain health, right? A healthy uh, heart means a healthy brain. All you need to do, okay, and this is, I don't mean by all, that's the only thing you need to do, but what I'm saying is that staying in motion, to stay, stay active, do at least a 30 minute brisk walk every single day. That should be your baseline. That's a great way to actually stay in baseline shape. And the reason I say that is because a lot of people go, you know what, I'm not used to working out. I don't know if I can get to doing it. I don't want you to actually go try to work out like crazy, which might not be good for your heart anyway, um, suddenly, and then say, you know what, a week of doing it, I can't do this anymore, I quit. I'd rather have you walk regularly uh, after dinner, you know, uh, just walk off with some of the food that you ate. Um, you'll actually be more relaxed uh, in the evening and may probably get a better night's sleep anyway. Um, uh, in the evening, or you can take a walk in the morning too. If you can squeeze it in your morning routine, that is a great way. You know, it's not too hot yet. You can go out, get some sunshine, vitamin D, all those kinds of things, some fresh air. All right, um, that's all good. So uh, these are just little tips of staying active. Thanks for the tip. Next, watch the Dr. William Lee Club playlist for more information on the Nutritarian diet. Thanks for watching Longevity Deprocessed. Hit like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on evidence-based longevity tips. Share your thoughts in the comments. Your journey matters. Remember, small daily habits create big changes. Until next time, keep to processing for a healthier, longer future. Let's make this journey together.